in this video I'm going to demonstrate the collection of close range photographic images using um, this model, this 34 inch muskie, which I caught in Wisconsin about 25 years ago. And to do so, I'm gonna step through the process of collecting photogra photogrammetrically correct images using good photography, good geometry, and good coverage. So to start, let's talk about um, good photography. I'm actually going to be using my um, Google Pixel 3 phone to capture my images here. And a few specs about this camera it has a 12.2 megapixel sensor with a sensor pixel size of about 1.4 micrometers. This camera is um, autofocus and has auto image stabilization it has a fixed aperture uh, with an f-stop of 1.8 a 76 degree field of view and a uh, about a 28 millimeter equivalent focal length so i am foregoing a lot of the um, what we're prescribing for a good close range photogrammetry camera but all that really means is um, that i'm going to have to be a little bit spot on with uh, the rest of my photogrammetry, um, including good geometry and good coverage. The uh, light conditions are overcast, um, so it's not incredibly bright, but really that shouldn't matter. My goal is to make sure all my images are captured with consistent lighting so that all these automated settings within my camera uh, will simply remain the same. So let's start by talking about geometry and my first task when determining uh, proper geometry for my photo centers is to determine the overall length of my object. So um, this muskie is about 30 inches long, uh, 32 inches long, and I know I want um, at least three overlapping photos to get a pretty decent model of uh, the main part of the body. So basically what that tells me is that I'm gonna have um, two photo centers here on the fish itself, which are marked by these pieces of tape. I just marked that for demonstration uh, purposes. It's not really necessary. I just thought it would help with the illustration of the video. All right, so since I know I want three images, the total length is about 33 inches. Um, Basically, I want each of my photo centers to be about 11 inches apart. So that's one photo, that's two photos. I'm gonna add another photo at the tip of the muskie's mouth and at the tail. And then I also know that since I want coverage on my first photo and my last photo, I'm also gonna collect a photo center 11 inches from the muskie's mouth and 11 inches from the muskie's tail for a total of six photos total across the main section of the fish. So that 11 inches represents my base or my photo width. Um, so that tells me if I want to maintain my good um, one to three base to height ratio that my photos, the optimal distance my photos will be taken from uh, my my subject will be about 33 inches or about three feet all right so i'm going to go ahead and collect that initial six uh set of six photos and just turn my camera on just using the sta standard camera settings now i want to uh, one thing we need to keep in mind is that i want to make sure that my camera angle is good so that i am nadir to my target so that the sensor within my camera remains flat and uh, perpendicular. Um, the sensor is actually parallel to my object. So I'm gonna go ahead and start um, with my photo center about 11 inches um, ahead of the musky nose. I'll take one photo and I'll move over my second photo is going to be at the nose of the muskie, maintaining about 
three feet above my target. And that's two. Move over to the first tape. Three. Second tape. Four. The tip of the tail. Five. And then I'm going to move approximately eight inches or 11 inches off the tail of the muskie. And that's the collection of our first set of images. Now, if this was a picture of a fish or if this muskie was flat, I could simply adjust my row of six photos off to get my 20% side lap, take another set of photos at Nader for the bot for the belly, take another set of six photos of Nader from on top, and then I would have a pretty good um, photogra photogrammetric model. However, since our muskie actually has um, was pretty fat, has some dimension, um, what we're going to do is change that angle of my camera so that I'm no longer Nader to the side of the fish, but I want to angle my camera. So I'm going to be Nader to whatever um, lateral part of the fish that I'm actually targeting with my camera. So to maintain the rule of 20% um, for my camera angle offset, I'm just going to step down, I'm going to do three steps. So for each of my six linear photo lanes, I'm going to step from Nader, I'm going to step down 20, down to 40, and then down to 60. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the top of the muskie and collect those photos. All right, so that'll be, so let me go ahead and um, so maintaining that same base to height ratio, I'm going to move down about 20 degrees and I'm about 11 inches from the tip of the muskie's nose, trying to have that same distance away from the target from the muskie that I did with my initial six photos. I'm gonna go ahead and take one photo at 20 degrees step down to about 40 degrees and then step down to about 60 degrees okay i'm going to do the same and this time i'm going to change the orientation of my camera we'll talk a little bit more about orientation in a second but just flipping taking the camera from uh, the opposite orientation is going to help improve my model so from the top of the fish, I'm gonna to come to 20 degrees. I'm gonna go to about 40 degrees. And then finally about 60. With each photo, I'm trying to uh, be very consistent with um, the distance I am from my target, but also I'm also shifting the target of what I'm pointing the camera at to be slightly offset. I don't want to point the camera directly at the same location. Um, if I'm doing that, I'm just I'm just generating redundant information. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat those photos for the tip of the muskie. So 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 60 degrees. I'm just going to stay over here. So I'm getting pretty close here, um, but one of the peculiar things with uh, my target is uh, the fact that the muskie has a pretty deep mouth. So while well, I am gonna be capturing some information, um, some data inside the mouth from 
just the photos that I've already taken, I'm going to introduce a set of photos that um, takes particular account this uh, feature. So what I want to do is basically I'm going to reproduce the arc that I uh, created with my base to height ratio of going over the fish. This time I'm going to just take a series of photos um, from the front um, to about the center of the fish. So that way, ideally, I'm picking up a little bit more of the detail that's within the mouth. So I'm going to maintain um, that same, my um, try to maintain my same um, distance of about three feet. And I'm going to start at, um, for the mouth, I'm going to start at about 80, 80 degrees um, of an angle, collect a photo. And I'm going to go up to about a 60 degree angle, move to about a 40 degree angle, and then about a 20 degree angle. And um, I probably could also add an arc in this direction, which would give me good definition on the top and the bottom of the mouth. So I'll do that as well. So I'm just going to, again, so I'm keeping the camera nadir to my target. So if my target is inside the mouth, I'm drawing an imaginary line uh, between that and my camera lens. So um, I'm going to change that angle by about 20 degrees. Um, take a photo and we'll We'll go another 20 to 40 degrees. All right, and then I'll do the same, go in the other direction. And I just don't know how much, if there's much light inside that mouth that's going to um, let those photos uh, give us some, some good information, but we'll have to take a look once we get the images inside our photogrammetry software. So the last step I want to do is uh, change my orientation to increase our camera calibration model. So I've already taken um, a series of photos uh, in the landscape perspective. And so basically what I want to do is I'm just going to rotate my camera to portrait and reproduce some of the images. Now I don't have to completely duplicate all the images that I've taken, any additional information that I provide to the model about my camera is going to improve the geometry resulting, um, that's going to form our three-dimensional model. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take um, a series of photos, I'm gonna do two strips of photos in portrait, and I'm gonna do those um, from about the 20 degree nadir mark so i'm not too i'm not worried about um my overlap in the left and right directions because i've already have those photos those photos already are going to exist in my model so ideally the software is going to recognize the pixels that are present within these portrait photos and stitch them to the landscape photos themselves so so here um aiming at uh, my, my frontal position at about 20 degree, about 20 degree angle. I'm gonna take a photo. Um, I'm just gonna reproduce basically what I had done before. I'm trying to maintain that same distance of about three feet. I'm probably a little bit off here, um, but hopefully as long as I'm within um, one scale factor, I should be good to go. All right, now I'm first set of tape, second set of tape, tail, and then 11 inches cast. All right, I'm gonna come to the other side and do the same thing, starting at 11 inches past the tail, to my tail, to the tape, second set of tape, my nose and 11 inches past the front of my fish. 